um, uh, for <laughs> thanking you. So we are moving to the next talk, which is on um, identifying and understanding game flaming, um, framing in online news, bad and fine grained linguistic features. Um, I'm all ears, uh, very uh, promising uh, for linguistic features. So it's uh, uh, by Hayastan Avedisian and David Proneski. So yes, please. Hello. Uh, yeah. I'll just share my screen. I will indicate to you in written somewhere in your chat in the th three, two minutes, yeah? Okay. Um, uh, shall I start? Please. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Hayastan Avetisan, and I'm going to present a study that my colleague David Poneska and I conducted on the topic of identifying and understanding game framing in online news, bird and fine grained linguistic features. Um, the presentation will cover the following points. First of all, the relevance of the issue and the contributions of our study will be identified. Secondly, the theoretical background will be introduced. Afterwards, the methods, the experimental setup and evaluation, as well as the results will be discussed. And finally, some ideas for future research will be introduced. Uh, daily, we are applied with political messages from various sources. Those messages are more and more often framed around strategies, competitions, wins and losses. Studies suggest that this framing of politics increases political distrust and cynicism or has a negative influence over citizens' knowledge, attitude and decisions. It might even destroy our collective trust and initiate social conflict. One of the main reasons behind its popularity among scholars might be the assumption that game framing might negatively influence democracy. Uh, the significance of further research on this matter from the linguistic point of view has been mentioned by a number of scholars. Language can be viewed as the main instrument of politics and public opinion formation. Furthermore, grammatical information might be a likely predictor of election outcomes. Therefore, greater attention to the language of framing and on how something is being said can lead to an increased awareness of political subject matters. Our contributions are as follows. Uh, firstly, a human label data set of issue and game frames in news media annotated with linguistic features at syntactic, semantic, semantic, syntactic, and pragmatic levels. Secondly, an overview of potential linguistic indicators of issue and game frames. And thirdly, a starting point for future studies attempting to investigate those frames. Um, conceptually, framing has roots in sociology, psychology, and linguistics. As the focus of our study is the issue and game frame in news media articles, we consider framing from the perspective of media and communication science and define it as the process of intentionally hiding or emphasizing facts in communication. In the framing literature, there is a distinction between issue-specific and generic frames. Issue-specific frames can be identified in relation to only specific topics or events, and generic frames, on the other hand, go beyond thematic limitations. As already mentioned, the focus of our study is the issue and game frame, which belong to the generic frames. Uh, the game frame can be defined as stories about winning or losing in elections in general and strategies for winning. Whereas the issue frame can be viewed as new stories dwelling upon the substance of political problems, issues, or proposals. Uh, let's proceed with the process of labeling framing in our data set, which consisted of three steps. Article selection, uh, corpus construction, and linguistic annotation. The news articles in our data set have different lengths and have been written independently. Quality newspapers were chosen over tabloids as they contain high levels of journalistic interventionism. We chose the online versions of the New York Times and Los Angeles Times. The following five topics were selected. US election 2020, Donald Trump's impeachment, the Armenian genocide, Greta Thunberg, and Taiwan's elections. 
In total, 100 news articles were extracted, including image descriptions and titles that seemed relevant for our analysis. Uh, after selecting the relevant articles, we proceeded with data pre-processing step. Uh, this included storing each article in a separate text file, transporting the text to the database, where the respective metadata, ID number, source, topic, file name was assigned to each paragraph. Once the data was, pre was processed, we examined all the paragraphs and assigned either the label positive or negative, depending on the presence or absence of any cues or issue and game frames. Our annotated data set consists of 4,063 statement, uh, statements, including 1,519 positive and 2,544 negative ones. Some of the paragraphs were quite easy to identify as containing the frame or not. However, this was not the case for a big portion of the statements. If you take a couple of seconds to read the two examples from our data set, you might notice that the second case is quite obvious. The sports and war language, battle, play, race, front runners is a direct indicator of the issue in game frame. The first case, however, is a bit more complex as the cues are not that direct. Uh, referring to the candidates as Grandpa Bernie, Uncle Joe and Cousin Pete involves some sarcasm, which may not be identified at a first glance. After the corpus construction, the linguistic features describing the respective frames were identified and annotated. Uh, for this step, we created the following flowchart. Firstly, after a thorough examination of each paragraph, we extracted the phrase introducing the issue game frame. Secondly, the actual linguistic unit was, was ex extracted from the corresponding phrase. And thirdly, a linguistic analysis of the extracted unit was employed. Uh, for the implementation of our binary classification task, we fine-tuned the pre-trained BERT model. We split our data set into train set 70%, validation 15, and test set 15. The hyperparameters follow those from the original BERT implementation. Moreover, we optimize using ADAMW. Based on the evaluation metrics, it can be observed that the model is able to classify the negative sentences better than the positive ones. The reason for this may be the fact that the positive paragraphs are much more difficult to identify even for human annotators. Uh, our findings confirm the results of previous studies that the game frame is often characterized by war and sports language. Moreover, the results show that a significant portion of this, these words carries a negative connotation, which appears to be another indicator of the issue game frame. Furthermore, in our data, politicians often use the personal pronoun we to create some sense of collectivism and share the responsibility. The personal pronoun I, on the other hand, is often used by the speaker to show, to show authority and personal responsibility along with commitment and involvement. As for the use of passive voice, our data confirms the findings discussed by previous studies. We found instances of passive voice where it is often used to either deflect blame or minimize emotional reactions. Furthermore, we found a connection between the language of the issue game frame and subjectivity. This might be used to trigger positive or negative evaluations and emotions. Uh, interestingly, our results regarding the concept of semantic frames show that the five most frequent frames found in a linguistic unit describing the issue game frame correspond to the contextual characteristics of those frames. Additionally, an interesting correlation between different topics and the dominant semantic frame should be mentioned. The competition frame is among the five most frequent frames in the articles covering the topic of elections. In comparison, the frame of judgment was frequent in the articles regarding Greta Thunberg and Trump's impeachment. In four of the topics, the judgment communication frame was among the most common ones. 
Moreover, the quarreling frame seems to be dominant within the articles discussing the Armenian genocide, Trump's impeachment, and the US election 2020. Uh, considering that manual annotation can often be biased, we believe that the overall annotation and the possible issue of subjectivity could be improved with the help of a second annotator. We came to the conclusion that bird-like approaches can be used for the automated detection of issue and game frames. However, more studies using larger data sets should be conducted. For future work, the result of our analysis can be used in the development and automation of computational frame detection and classification. Furthermore, our study provides a starting point for future research investigating the linguistic indicators of issue and game frames. It displays the grammatical features and level, levels of analysis that are crucial to this matter. Our findings suggest that a further investigation of the following linguistic aspects and their inclusion in the annotation scheme might help to gain more insights into the process of formation of the issue game frame. Uh, semantic types of verbs or further analysis of model verbs and the verbs they are followed by, the concept of negation, types of negated verbs and nouns, lexicogrammatical patterns and metaphorical and ideological meanings, which will be computationally quite challenging um, moreover, the results can be applied in further research or analy on analyzing and understanding subjectivity uh, in connection to framing. As a final point, we encourage using our manual annotations in the process of developing models for the fine range issue and game framing identification. Some references. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>